Hey everyone, I'm Tom. And I'm Kate. And we are the Mortons on the Move. We have had the Truma AquaGo on-demand water heater installed in our RV for a few months now. And in this video, we are going to share our thoughts and experiences using it. So first of all, why did we decide to go with this unit? Well, for most of the reasons that it's advertised for. First of all, we saved about 100 pounds of weight in our RV by switching to this unit because we no longer carry around that 12 gallons of water. This unit is not supposed to be able to scald you at all by limiting the water temperature to a maximum of 120 degrees. There's no more waiting for water to heat up when we try to save energy, especially off grid when we turn the water heater on and off. The water no longer takes 20 minutes to heat up. It's just hot and ready to go. This unit is supposed to be a lot more efficient and also the maintenance is supposed to be much easier on it. So how do you actually operate this unit? Well, we have the AquaGo Comfort model, and with that model, you get an internal control panel that we mounted in our control panel cabinet here, right here. So the control panel is a little round knob that you can rotate to select different options. The middle mode is off. That's pretty self-explanatory. The water heater doesn't function at all, and it doesn't protect itself from freezing either. So in the off position, the water heater is completely off. Underneath the off option, you'll see there are two other options. And the first option is the electric antifreeze option. This is an additional unit. It's like a rod that you insert into the heater if you wanna leave it full of water and still keep it from freezing. What that rod does is it draws a little bit of DC power to keep the unit warm and it prevents you from having to winterize the unit. We don't have that rod and we haven't tried it out, but that's what that option is for. The option below that is the clean option. And this is a semi-autonomous cleaning mode that you insert some tablets into the water heater and it cycles it through to descale and clean out the heater. We're not gonna go over that in this video, but when we do do that to this unit, we will make a video about it. Quick tip about that clean mode, don't click this into clean mode unless you intend to clean the unit. Because if you click it into the clean mode and you leave it there for more than 30 seconds, it will basically put it into the clean mode and it will render your unit inoperable for a few hours. The two modes above off are the modes that actually turn on the water heater. If you go ahead and rotate this knob, we're gonna turn it to the top mode, you'll see a little light comes on here indicating that the water heater is now on. The top mode is the eco mode, and what that means is the water heater is just ready for water to pass through it, and once you turn on a faucet and water starts to flow through it, it fires up and heats that water up. This is how conventional on-demand water heaters work, but the problem is that it can take a while to heat all that water up as it has to go all the way through that unit. One really neat function about the AquaGo is that it has a comfort mode. If we select the mode down from that, what that does is that uses the unit's hybrid functionality. This water heater has a little tiny tank inside of it that it'll heat the water up in that tank so that when you ask for water at the faucet, it'll give you warm water almost instantaneously. So we're outside with the Truma AquaGo unit, and if you take a look at it, in this area right here, you will see a relatively small tank. It might be maybe about a liter and a half or so, and this is the hybrid portion of this water heater. The boiler is here, the water goes through it and heats up, but then it goes into this little tank. And this little tank is what, in comfort mode, it keeps 105 degrees, so that you're gonna have warm water at your faucet as quickly as the water can get there from this unit. This little tank does function in eco mode as well, though. What it does is it mixes the water coming out of this unit and helps stabilize the temperature to minimize any spikes or drops that you'll see from the unit due to fluctuations in water flow. Keeping that little tank hot, the water heater does burn a little bit more propane and makes it a little bit less efficient, but it's still only about a liter and a half of water as opposed to 12 gallons like we had previously. Leaving it in the comfort mode, you will hear the water heater cycle clicking on and off to keep that little bit of water warm and ready for use all the time. The AquaGo Basic model has the same functionalities that you can control here, except you have to go outside and change them on the unit itself. So now that you know the theory behind how this unit is supposed to work, let's talk about real life usage. 
So using the Truma AquaGo for doing dishes works great. Um, if you're like me, you're probably going to be turning the faucet on and off, on and off multiple times to conserve water while you're doing dishes. Um, when, when you're doing that and you're turning it on and off, what you will notice is that the water will not be at the 120 degrees that uh, the Truma AquaGo actually heats it to. It's going to come out somewhere around 105 most of the time. If you're on hookups and you can run as much water as you want and you want to use a lot of water, just leaving it on will get you to that 120 degrees. Um, and that also works if you're going to say fill up one of your sides of your sink. One of the concerns that we had for an on-demand water heater was that if we were going to only be pulling a low volume, small trickle of water, that we wouldn't get hot water. The AquaGo does provide hot water even at a very slow trickle out of the faucet. We have noticed that between the settings of comfort and eco mode, there is a significant difference on time to hot water when you first turn on the faucet. On comfort mode, the hot water is already heated up in the small little tank of the AquaGo, and so you get it pretty fast within a few seconds of turning on the faucet. In eco mode, it hasn't heated the water already in the tank, and so it takes a little bit longer for it to get to the faucet, and what we found is it takes maybe about 15-20 seconds. The main difference of that is if you're out boondocking and you're wanting to conserve water, you might not want to run that 15-20 to 20 seconds of water in your sink just to get hot water. So what we do is, if we're off-grid, we'll just turn it on to comfort mode just before we start washing the dishes so that the AquaGo can start heating up that small tank of water. When I'm doing dishes, because it's not reaching a really high temperature a lot of the time, I run my sink all the way on the hot. With this, I can run it at all the way hot without fear of scalding my hands, and I feel like the water is hot enough to do my dishes. So showering is the second biggest usage that we use the AquaGo for, and this is where temperature control is really important for your comfort. All right, so I like to take really hot, long showers when we're hooked up. Um, and the Truma AquaGo, true to its name, really gives you unlimited showers. You can shower as long as you want and you're not gonna run out of hot water, which we love. Showering with the Truma overall is not a whole lot different than showering with a conventional water heater. The water stays nice and hot. However, if you turn the water off for an extended period of time, it might cool off a little bit and take a little bit to get back up to a higher temperature above that 105 degrees that it makes sure to maintain in its small tank. I like to take showers above 105 degrees, so sometimes it feels a little bit cool when I turn it back on, but Caitlin takes a little bit cooler shower and I don't think she ever notices that. One of the greatest things we realized with the Truma is that in the shower, we have the water shut off when we're off grid like we are right now and we're trying to conserve water. When you use that water shut off valve on the handle to quickly shut off the water, with our previous water heater and in other RVs we've used as well, we've noticed that the water will get ice cold when you turn it back on. And we think that's because there is a pressure drop in the standard tank style water heaters and the water will actually flow back into the cold line a little bit. With this water heater, that does not happen anymore. No more ice cold blast when you turn the water back on. What happens when you're in the shower, however, and someone else turns on a faucet? They're doing dishes or they're washing their hands or they even flush the toilet. Well, with this water heater, we don't really notice a whole lot of difference. It seems to be able to keep up. It will drop to temperature a little bit. We've noticed uh, with a thermal gun that the temperature drops up to even five degrees when somebody initially turns on full blast hot water somewhere else. Typically, however, the water heater regains that temperature in a uh, minute or so when it, as it ramps up the flame inside it to compensate for that higher flow. A bigger issue for a lot of people is if they were to shut the water off, do you see a high temperature spike? We have seen a small temperature spike, but it's nothing too extreme. Nothing felt like it's ever gonna burn us. It's only a couple degrees. The water heater seems to compensate very quickly for drops in flow rate. Our previous water heater tended to do the same thing, not for the same reasons. I think it had to do with pressure drops and the mixing valves. The water temperature would fluctuate greatly if someone else turned on a faucet. So really there's not much difference using the Truma versus the conventional style we had before. If you shower with a very, very small amount of water, just a trickle, you may notice that the Truma doesn't get up to the full temperature, but typically with a shower, we run it at a higher flow rate for a short period of time and then turn it off, and the water heater works perfectly doing that.
While using the Truma unit, we've been monitoring how much energy it consumes. First of all, electrical. We've noticed that it uses about 20 to 25 watts of DC power to actually run itself, which is really, really minimal. And that is only when it's running its fan and it's actually actively heating water. When it's at idle, it draws maybe a watt of power just to keep its brain running, but it's really, really minimal usage on electrical. We've also been monitoring how much propane this unit uses. We have a tank checking system, the LPG tank check, which can accurately read how much propane is in our tank down to a tenth of an inch. So we can really tell how much this unit is using. Just general real life usage for the two of us taking long showers and doing dishes while hooked up. So we're using a lot more water. We found that we burn about a quarter of a 40 pound cylinder in one month of usage. That's about two to three gallons of propane use per month to heat water, which is incredibly efficient compared to our previous unit. We tested that by being hooked up and not using propane for any other appliances. Everything else was running on electric except for the water heater. Another question we were wondering about before we put this in is what kind of sounds does it make? Our previous water heater, when you turned it on, it made this very low grumble as it shot the flame through it. It was kind of a sound and you could hear it inside the RV. This unit still makes sounds while they are considerably different. Here's what this unit sounds like when it's in operation. This is what the unit sounds like compared to my voice at about four feet away. So there's the exhaust fan that runs. There is a pump noise that I believe cycles water through it and you can hear that sometimes. And then sometimes you'll also hear the flame itself kind of poof and a little bit of a roar. Overall from the outside, this is quieter than our previous unit was. So now we're inside, the camera's located about where our bed is. It's about five feet from where the Truma is located, which is right about down here. Here's what it sounds like from inside our coach. It isn't any louder than our previous conventional unit was, but I am an extremely light sleeper. And that's another reason that we make sure to switch it into eco mode at night because it doesn't cycle to keep that tank warm. And even that little bit of cycling can still wake me up. Overall, the Truma AquaGo does not heat the water up as high as our old tank water heater did. Part of this is because it doesn't have to heat it up that high to heat the entire tank's worth. We have noticed that when we use low volumes of water, we have to put the temperature control all the way on hot to get hot water. But if we use it for sustained periods of time um, that we're running the water, that we can use both temperature controls, hot and cold, to find the temperature that we want and it maintains that temperature really well. In our experience, this AquaGo has been more than powerful enough to heat the water needs in our RV. And we occasionally do run two things at once, say washing the dishes and taking a shower at the same time. And it has been able to maintain hot water going to both places. When we turn on that second water source, we do notice a dip in temperature in the original water source. Uh, but after they are running a little while, they seem to even out and compensate for that extra flow. Our favorite way to camp is to be off grid, away from everything, boondocking with no hookups like we are right now. It's great for boondocking because we save so much propane. When it's in eco mode, we can just leave it on that mode all the time and we barely sip propane at all. When we do want to save water at the sink or at the shower, we just switch it real quick to comfort mode. It heats up that little tank and we're able to save water as well, not having to wait for it to heat up when we turn on the faucet. This enables us to stay out longer at our boondocking locations without having to go to town to fill up water or propane. The beauty of an on-demand water heater is that we only use what we need. Previously with our tank water heater, we would heat up a whole tank of water and feel like we needed to use it all. So we would save all of our dishes, all of our showers so that, you know, we would do them all at the same time. Now we do the dishes when they're dirty. We take showers when we want to. Uh, it really frees up our ability to use the hot water when we want to. Overall, compared to our old suburban tank water heater, there are several big differences that the Truma AquaGo has. 
Being on demand, first of all, of course, it is much, much faster to heat the water up. Our previous unit took probably half an hour to really get the water hot. This unit, just a couple seconds, and you can hop in the shower and it's gonna be warm. That is amazing. Also, it's not gonna be too warm. Our previous unit probably heated the water up to like 140 degrees or so, and the reason for that is it's a small, small water heater, and they heat the water really high to get more volume of hot water out of it. This unit, though, maxes out at 120 degrees and it's not going to scald you. It also weighs a lot less. As we mentioned before, we dropped about 100 pounds in replacing our old water heater with this one. It's also much more efficient overall, even considering using propane all the time and not having that electrical option. That is a big difference as well. Our previous unit did have an electric element, and if we were at a campground where we already paid for the electricity, we would use that electricity to heat our water. And now that that electrical element isn't there really there's no difference using it on or off grid it's really the same both ways but because it is so incredibly efficient that was a big concern for me but it really hasn't been a problem at all. It's only a couple dollars a month to heat our water. One of my favorite parts of the Truma Aquago is that it got rid of that cold blast of water in the shower when you turn it off to conserve water and you turn it back on. That is no longer an issue and I absolutely love that part. My favorite part is that I can take a long, really hot shower and not worry about running out of hot water. It also just so fast to heat up and that it, it just works. It doesn't, it doesn't spike temperatures. Overall, we've been really happy with it. I have not done any maintenance on this unit yet because it's still relatively new to us, but it's supposedly really easy and we'll be going over that in a future video. That's going to be the descaling procedure and the winterizing of the unit. But that pretty much wraps it up for this video. We hope you've learned a lot about the Truma Aquago and if we haven't covered your question, please leave it in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more informative videos in the future. And we hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye.